Hey there, how are you guys doing? In my last video, I showed a quick tutorial on how to find memory leaks in .NET. Let me follow that up with this video in which I'm going to show a quick tutorial on how to analyze the .NET large object heap. Okay, so let's get started. What I have here is a memory dump in which I had prepared earlier. I wrote a program which created a very large object in memory and it would cause the memory to fragment. This object would move into the large object heap. I will use this memory dump to analyze the large object heap. I put the source code for this computer program in the description below. Uh, you can give it a try, but you can use any memory dump that has fragmentation in the large object heap for this tutorial. We start first by loading the uh, plugin for .NET. So we go load by SOS CLR. So what that does is it loads the SOS plugin. I've made several videos in this playlist in which I load the SOS plugin. So I'm not going to go through what the plugin does, but we are going to use a series of commands from the plugin to analyze the large object heap. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dump heap minus stat. And that's going to dump out all the .NET objects, a histogram of all the .NET objects. And I'm going to look at how big they are in memory. You can see from my output over here that inside the heap, there are fragmented blocks which are larger than half a megabyte. And these blocks, uh, they go into the large object heap. That's why they appear in the uh, fragmented list. I have named the object large object so that it'll be very easy to find large object in the heap. From this point, what we can do is we can dump out the EE heap and that will give us the size of all the heaps. What we are looking for is the start memory address of the large object heap, which is over here. So this address over here, if we send that into dump heap, like, like so, what will happen is it will dump all the objects in the large object heap and it will generate the statistics. From the statistics, we can see that the strings are occupying the largest portion of memory and the large object which I had created earlier is also occupying a very large portion of memory. So what I can do is I can dump heap the large object and I can get the the instance of all instances of this large object. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump one of the large object just like uh, we did for the um, .NET tutorial on GC root. Um, I'm just going to GC root. And what I'm going to find is that this object is alive. It is owned by leaky app. So the way GC root works is that it walks the root of objects all the way back to the first object that created it. If there are no roots, it means that the object is ready for garbage collection. In this case, there is a root. The root is leaky app has a reference to large object array, which has a reference to large object. This means this object is not going to be garbage collected. The reason it is in the large object heap is because it owns a significant portion of memory. And what it owns is actually strings. I have made this object to own a lot of strings. So from this dump, um, it's quite clear to see that um, large object is occupying a very large portion of memory. What we can do is uh, we can repeat the uh, dump heap uh, again and we can see other objects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump out the string because the string was significantly large. So if I dump the string, what I'm going to get is I'm going to get a whole lot of strings which are small and a few of them which are really, really large. So I'm going to dump out one of the largest instances and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to GC root it and we are going to see that it is actually owned by large object. This gives us a clue that to clean this string, what we got to do is we're going to change large object. Now, if I look at the dump object for the string, what I'm going to find is the value is so large that even WinDebug doesn't want to print it. I did this intentionally to show that really large strings go into the large object heap. The large object heap also will have arrays, images, 
or just about any other kind of .NET memory in which .NET cannot decompose or break down the memory into smaller bits. The large object heap is there to protect the other heaps from fragmentation. However, the large object heap itself can fragment. So in this memory dump, if I wanted to get rid of the fragmentation, how I would do it is that I will have to recode large object to not have a string that is so large. So maybe I change the code to be a string builder that contains a smaller string, or I change the code so that the strings are compressed in some way. By storing large strings, I create memory fragmentation. And there you have it. This is a very quick way in order to find objects in the large object heap and a very quick way to try to analyze memory fragmentation that happens in the large object heap. Often, you will find that when fragmentation happens, it will be after hundreds of hours of execution of the .NET program. But the technique is the same. Just dump out the large object heap using dump heap and then use GC root to look at the roots of the objects to see whether whatever is in the large object heap is actually being referenced by an object in your program. Now, the large object heap can also contain objects with no roots. This means that the object is being finalized. So in my previous tutorial, I showed how to check the finalizer queue. So you can do that if you find an object with no root. Generally, the large object heap should not fragment if the program is written well. But if, if it is fragmenting, definitely take a look at the root and see whether you can spot why the objects are sitting in the large object heap. Well, to keep the video short, I think we will just end it right here. Um, the topic of memory and how the EE heap works is really significantly complex. So I think I'll just leave the large object heap at this point. Definitely tell me what you think about um, the .NET debugging tutorials. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Uh, give me a comment on what kind of videos you want to see next. Definitely subscribe, hit that bell icon. Uh, that lets me know if you, uh, if you like the content. That lets me know what kind of videos to make. Definitely leave me a comment below. Tell me what you want to see next. Until next time, I'm High Voice signing out.